What's up everyone, in this video, I'm just going to be giving you a checklist for the equipment that I use to record my content at my studio. Now I've got a studio at my home and at my office. I have gone through probably $50,000 worth of lenses, cameras, mics, all trying to get the perfect setup, not only for ease of use and cost, but for what my specific purpose is. So if you're listening to this video and you wanna create simple talking head educational videos like this, this video is gonna be perfect for you. I'm gonna break down the exact equipment that I can came to the realization was the perfect fit for this. Really, it comes down to only a few items that you need to buy. You can stop watching all the other videos about what equipment, what cameras, what lenses. If you want videos that look like this for this purpose, that are very simple, very affordable, this is gonna be the perfect video for you. Now, this is the first video that I've ever done on production and equipment because frankly, it's not my field of expertise. So I've hired experts and I've gone through a lot of different iterations and trials and errors to get to where we are today. So if, you have, if you're new to the channel, I'm Jay Feldman, CMO at Outer Public Relations. I basically mainly teach marketing tactics. So if you're trying to acquire more leads, this is the channel for you. And I'm actually giving away $11,000 worth of free marketing resources, including software subscriptions, an 8 million contact lead database, and free PR. So if you haven't already grabbed that, go down in the notes and grab that right now. You don't want to miss that. All right, so let's talk about content creation like this. If you're trying to create really simple videos that are educating your audience, whether it be on YouTube or Shorts, and you just want a simple setup. You can sit down, create content, upload it so that your team can handle it. I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do that, mostly with the camera setup. So there's a couple different aspects that we wanna think about. One, what does your setup look like? Are you in an office like this? I'm facing a window right now, so I have really good light. If you're not facing a window, you're gonna to need to buy a good light. Uh, I'll link a, the light that I have in my home studio in the show notes so you can grab that. But this is mainly gonna be about camera, lens, and mic. That's the most important thing, and it's really easy to get this stuff wrong. So I'm gonna be telling you the exact camera, the exact mic, the exact lens that you need to use if you want a really simple, seamless, clean video. So let's talk first about camera. And I've gone through several different cameras. And if you've watched videos online, you've probably been pointed in all kinds of directions. Sony's, Nikon's, $3,000 cameras. You do not need a $3,000 camera. In fact, most of the time, your iPhone's gonna get a better result than those cameras if you don't know how to use them. The camera that I came down to for my office studio, my new office, is the Sony ZV. E10. It's their newest camera, and honestly, they built it for this specific purpose. There is more expensive cameras that Sony offers. Their, their A series can go up to $3,000 per camera. Those are photography cameras. They have a whole bunch of added stuff that gives you a better result for photography. You do not need them to make videos like this. This, I think, is optimized for talking head videos, and you're not gonna get a better result with the really expensive Sony cameras. And the same thing's gonna go for lenses. I'm gonna teach you exactly what lens to get. But you need to understand that more money doesn't always get you a better result. It depends on what you're using it for. So if you're using it for this, to do what I'm doing right now, and to create really easy short content, then the Sony ZV-E10 is gonna be your best bet. It's made for this purpose, and you might see the price tag and say, that's too cheap. I'm not gonna get a great result. You're wrong. It's got a brand new sensor. So as opposed to like the Sony A6400, which is a more expensive camera, but it's an older model. That, that camera's like six years old. The technology is not as new and it's not as simplified. They really made this Sony ZV-E10 super simple as far as controls go, and the functionality is perfect for this. So it's about $700 on Amazon. Uh, you can get it with the standard lens, which is pretty good, but I'm gonna show you exactly what lens I use for this, and I highly recommend getting this lens. Uh, assuming that you follow my instructions and you buy my equipment, the Sony ZV-E10 is gonna be perfect for you. And I'm, my goal for you is to get your whole setup under 1500 bucks, which you can spend on a single lens if you watch any other video. With me, less than $1,500, I guarantee it. All right, so Sony ZV-E10, I'm gonna teach you the settings at the end. It's $700, I would buy it without the standard lens. Now, if you want a little more versatility, you can get it for an extra $100 with the standard lens. It's like a 16, 32 millimeter lens that you can change uh, to, to vary between them. And it's a pretty good lens, but I'm gonna show you the better lens that's for this. So 700 or 800 bucks if you're gonna get it with or without the lens. And now let's talk about the lens that I recommend you get. For simplicity, if you don't have a ton of space in your office or you want the camera mounted to your desk like mine is, it's literally mounted to my desk on an arm and I'm gonna show you the exact arm, then you're gonna need a wide angle lens because if you have like a 50 millimeter or a 35 millimeter lens on it, it's gonna be too close if it's mounted to your desk. In order to get a shot like this, you would have to put your camera very far away. So you need a wide angle lens. And I experimented with a couple. 
The one that I'm using right now is the Sigma 16 millimeter E-mount lens. It was somewhere between three and $400 for this lens, but it is worth it. The aperture goes all the way down to 1.6. So if you, I wanted to make a really blurry black background on this shot, I could. And it's really, really clean, crisp, powerful. Now Sony also has a 16 millimeter wide angle lens that's much smaller and much cheaper for about $100. I did not like the quality as much. I would highly recommend spending the extra couple hundred bucks getting the Sigma 16 millimeter, you get a really clean shot like this. You can blur the whole background and get a really high quality video shot. For versatility, I would also get the standard lens for the Sony ZV-E10. It's an extra hundred bucks and it's a really good lens. But this is gonna be the main one that you're using for your video content, the Sigma 16 millimeter. All right, let's talk about mics because audio is super important. If you hear the quality on this guy, you'll understand why quality of audio is so important. And I've got this mic here and I've got a different mic at my home office and I have experimented with tons of mics. I've upgraded, I've downgraded, I've used shotgun mics, tube mics. This guy, as far as quality and ease of use goes, is the best and also price. So this is the Shure MV7. Costs about $200 on Amazon. Comes with or without the XLR cable uh, slash USB. This one has USB and is connected right now via USB. Here's why I think you should get this exact mic. For me, ease of use is one of the most important things. Now, if you're trying to keep costs down, this is really effective as well, and I'll tell you why. The USB connects directly to the camera and to my computer. So as I'm recording this video right now, all I have is a USB port going in. So I can just turn on my equipment, my mic's automatically connected, my, com my camera's automatically connected. Every Everything is USB to my computer. There's no file storage. There's no SD cards. None of that is going on. I just turn my computer on, boom, I'm ready to shoot, I'm ready to record. Most other mics, like the Shure SMB, which is what Joe Rogan uses, it costs about $500 and you need three other pieces of equipment to use it. You might get a tiny bit of an upgrade in terms of sound from the MV7. If you compare this to the Shure SM7B, which is the microphone that I have in my home office, it is amazing. But in order to use it, I need a soundboard, I need a cloud lifter, and an XLR cable. So it requires a lot of other equipment that can cost a lot of money, usually an extra $500, just to be able to use the $500 mic. Now, if you're like me and you appreciate simplicity, this mic is, you get almost the same quality without any of that headache, without any of those wires and soundboards cluttering up your desk. You can control this via USB on an app right here on my computer, the Shure Plus Motive app, so I can change the gain. I can change it from like dark to light sound. So this is by far my favorite go-to mic for podcasting, for videos like this, for ease of use, and I don't have a million wires running all over the place. All right, now in terms of settings and software that I use, now this is super important, took a long time to get. Follow the simple formula and you should be fine. Set the ISO to auto. Set the shutter speed to 1 over 50 and set the frame rate to 25 or 23 frames per second. You do that, you should be good to go. I also like shooting on vivid mode. Gives the color a little bit of an edge, makes it really cool. I like to turn the aperture all the way down. So right now it's at like 2.2. Uh, it does go all the way down to 1.6, which is super low. When that happens, I'm sitting in front of a window and the shot gets really blown out. Keep your settings like I just mentioned and adjust your aperture until you can get a good lighting for that aperture. In terms of recording, Recording. I record everything on OBS. I have different settings depending on where I am. So I, I change the scene from like J office to Otter office, vertical, horizontal. So I have four different scenes, a vertical and a horizontal for each office. And when I'm shooting on those different offices, I just toggle the scenes and it automatically connects the right equipment and puts it in the right setting so that I'm getting the result that I want instantly. I don't edit any of my own content. On OBS, it's really easy to stop, pause, change scenes so that I can get really cool shots and edits without having to do any of the, the work on the back end. And I do have an editor that I send this all to. I just upload it all to Google Drive and let them handle it from there. But it's really important to note that OBS gives you the opportunity opportunity to switch scenes very quickly. Let's see if I can do that for you. Just so you looks a little crazy. But if I were to like show you something on my screen, that's what it would look like with the click of a button. So imagine if you want to do like a scene in scene, teach somebody what's going on, but do like a, a walkthrough video of a software app and you want to make yourself really small, you can do that with the click of a button to toggle back and forth. If you found this video helpful, it is something new that I've done. I don't usually give equipment advice and production advice, but this is something that I struggled with for a long time. And I hope I save you some time and money. You can get this whole setup for, let, let's count. The camera, 800 bucks. The lens, about 300 bucks. We're at 1100. The mic, 200 bucks. 
So now we're at like 1300 bucks. You get some cords and you get a mount for your desk and now you are under $1,500. That's the price of some lenses. So I hope that you found this helpful. I hope that you get really high quality content. I don't have any affiliate links to send you, but I will drop the Amazon links to those products down there in the show notes. And if you found this helpful, please, please subscribe to the channel, like this video and leave a comment if you have any suggestions about some of the equipment that I'm using. Uh, or suggestions and help for other people who might be watching this video and reading the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.